Dallas Mavericks is winning this series in six games without a doubt. I have the utmost confidence that the Dallas Mavericks will win this series here. Who? Six or seven games. You know, obviously the Celtics are very well put together. They have a complete team. Um, and they were the number one te defensive team in the Eastern Conference all year long. They did their thing. They've been killing it all year long. So you got to give credit where it's due to them. But my thing is, in this journey that we've seen from the Boston Celtics, we've seen them struggle last series guarding rookies and guarding two-year players, players who aren't even elite scorers in his league, TJ McConnell and Nim Nimbar. We've seen them struggling trying to guard those guys on the Pacers. What the hell are the Celtics going to do when they got to guard Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic? I just don't think they'll have an answer for those two. And yeah, I know they got some great defenders. They got uh, Drew Holiday and Derek White, who've been playing out of this world. But even then... They're not going to be enough to guard Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving because those guys can score on anybody. And here's where I give the Celtics some sort of advantage over the Timberwolves, but also I see a lot of similarities in this. So you see Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, both lanky defenders. Obviously, you got Drew Holiday, who, who's going to be a ball hawk at all times. He's going to be a pest on defense at all times. Same for Derek White. You look at the, the skill set those guys have on defense and the structure this team has on defense – you can't sit here and tell me the Timberwolves don't have a similar build around their defensive presence. Their guard, Mike Conley, not as good as a defender as Drew Holiday, but Anthony Edwards, uh, Alexander Walker, and, and um, Jaden McDaniels all are lanky defenders, and they all play great defense, and they still didn't have a single answer for Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. So, you know, those two are going to be the big focus, but what you can't forget is that those guys have a lot of help coming on the support end for the Dallas Mavericks, bro. It's not just Luka and Kyrie that you got to worry about here. Obviously, you still got to worry about uh, P.J. Washington and... Um, the other shooter who don't miss in the corner <laughs> and Gafford been playing good lively been playing good like Dallas low-key got a good size advantage down low especially if Porzingis is not there so it's gonna depend but I'm gonna take my pick with the Dallas Mavericks to win this series here in six or seven games and I'm gonna stand on that man Dallas Mavericks they're just very, very talented on the offensive end. And obviously, we know what the Celtics can do. But there's been a lot of inconsistencies that I've seen with the Celtics so far up until this point. Um, they played some teams without their stars. They play some average type of teams on this journey. And uh, the only thing I've seen is them hang around and play to the level of their competition. There was multiple times where the Indiana Pacers could have won the game in, in that previous series that they got swept in. There was multiple games that went down to the wire. Honestly, three of the four games that happened in that series were down to the wire, and the, the Pacers just happened to blow the game. But they could have easily won three of those games that they lost to the Boston Celtics. So that concerns me. I'm looking at the Celtics. That concerns me. Porzingis coming back from injury. That concerns me because now we got to decide if we're going to give him immediate minutes, even though he's not necessarily going to be in the shape that he was before he got hurt. That concerns me. Al Horford playing big minutes against Gafford and Lively. That concerns me. There's some things here on the Celtics that's kind of a red flag. As they say, red flag, pink flag, yellow flag, all these different flag colors. Look, Celtics got a lot of them, man. In each of these series that they play on this journey, they play to the level of their competition, and they haven't necessarily looked like the sharpest team in the NBA or the sharpest team even in the Eastern Conference. So I'm going to just leave it there. It's some concerns out there. Maybe they'll fix it. Maybe they'll come out looking a little bit different. And we know how the Celtics get active when JT and Jalen Brown is both rolling, but maybe they'll look a little bit different. And, and hey, who knows? Who knows? We'll, we'll see, though. It'll be interesting to watch, man. Um, anyway, look, shoot me a call. Let's hear your take on this. Let's hear who you got winning this series between the Celtics and the Mavericks. Uh, personally, I also don't want the Celtics to win, but I, I accept great basketball. So if they're playing great basketball... I can watch this. I can watch them hold up a trophy if they earned it, if they play and it looks like 
they've been winning games more than the other team has been losing games. I can I can withstand that. That's cool with me. Anyway, shoot us a call, 219-413-9405. Leave us a quick take, man. I want to hear your thoughts on uh, our previous series with the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Dallas Mavericks. And then also, let's hear uh, what you're thinking about the, the Celtics in the uh, Dallas Mavericks finals that's about to happen are you gonna watch it are you entertained by it you know do you think it's gonna be a good finals is it a good matchup on paper will it be a good matchup in, in on the floor so I would love to hear that anyway we got some news coming up for the run man a lot a lot of news um, some new things happening and all across the board so we'll touch on that in just a second it's halftime we'll be right back